All right, let's get started with lesson six, experimental error part one. Now, it's important to understand that when you perform an experiment or do a lab, that there's always going to be error in, that exists in your lab report. This is because of limitations in your instruments that you use to measure. And that goes along with our significant figures that we looked at in lessons five. Also, sometimes our experimental design, our procedure is also not perfect and therefore there will be mistakes um, in our lab. Also, sometimes the instruments that we use to measure are also not functioning correctly, they haven't been calibrated correctly, or they're just not working and so give us incorrect information or data in our experiment. So lesson six is gonna help us to understand some important concepts about experimental error, as well as how to deal with it when it occurs. So first of all, we're gonna look at two important vocabulary words that you need to know quite well. The first is accuracy. Accuracy refers to how closely individual measurements are or agree with the generally accepted or correct value or literature value. Um, this, this means that basically your experimental value will be compared to an accepted value that scientists will agree on. And so how close your experimental value is to the accepted value will determine how accurate your laboratory, your laboratory um, results will be. However, precision deals with the significant figures in the instrument that you can record in, uh, data from. So remember that in every instrument that you use to measure something, there's always going to be some uncertainty or error. And so the more, the more significant figures or the more decimal places that you can record your measurement to, uh, the more precision that you will have. All right, so now that you got those two definitions down in your notes, we will now get into um, specifics in accuracy and precision. Now, in the lab, you're going to uh, basically have two types of data that you have to deal with. First of all is a single data point, all right? So to understand if a single data point, say like you did a mass measurement of 2.6 grams, all right? Now, that is a single data point, and for that data point to be accurate, it needs to be close to the literature value. And the closer this value, our measured value is to the literature or correct value, the more accurate our single data point is. Now, as far as the precision of a single data point is, the precision again deals with how many decimal places or significant figures that you can actually record. The more precise your measure, measuring tool is, the more significant figures you record, the more precision your single data point has. All right? For instance, um, if you can actually record the mass to 2.63 grams, this instrument has more precision than this one because you can record more significant digits and therefore your measurement is even better. All right, so that's for a single data point. What about for a group of data points? All right, now a set of data points usually recall it is usually at least three different measurements. So say we had 2.6, 2.8, and 2.4, okay, grams. This is a set of data points. For these data points to be accurate, all right, you, they, basically the average of these data points or the mean um, needs to be very close to the accepted or true literature value, all right? And so the closer the average is um, of these data points to the literature value, the more accuracy exists in our um, overall lab report, all right? 
Um, it's important then that instead of doing an experiment once, that we do it multiple times. And so that's why for many of your science courses, you've done an experiment over and over again to do multiple trials. And when you do labs in this class, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to do multiple trials to get multiple data points so that you can take the average and compare that average, your average value, to the accepted or literature value to test your accuracy. All right. Now, if the set of data points are precise, we're not really looking at significant figures in this case. It's a little different. With a set of data points, to be precise, it means how close they are together. The more close these data points are to each other in agreement, the more precise these, um, your sets of data are to each other. So the precision of a set of data points is a little bit different than the precision of a single data point. All right, so here we have, let's say, a target. And um, we threw some darts at it. And let's say the darts represents um, data collected here. And, of course, the bullseye is the goal. That's, that's, the, that's the key here, all right? So we really want to make sure that the darts hit the target in the center where the bullseye is and that represents our accuracy, okay? In other words, what I'm saying is, is that we're, our accepted or true value is the bullseye. And the, the uh, darts that we throw represents a different experimental trial. Um, for instance, in all of these, we have represented three trials, trial one, two, and three. And this is the data that we collected from each one. So the question is, let's test the precision. Are our data points in, our, in this first experiment, are they close together? To me, I would say definitely not. So I would say that um, no or not precise, the first one. All right, and the other thing is, is now let's look at the accuracy. If you averaged these three trials together, are they going to be close to the bullseye? The answer to me is no. Um, I would say that our data points are not accurate. We are far away from our target value. All right, well, let's take a look at the next target. Okay, again, we have three data points. Now, are these three data points precise? I would say yes, they are, because they're very grouped close together. So I would say are precise. However, are they accurate? And I would say no, not accurate, because, again, Um, these data points are quite far away from our target, our, our bullseye, where we're trying to get to. All right, so let's look at the next target. We have, again, three data points. What do you think about the precision? Are they super close? Well, they're a lot closer than they are in the first target, but still, they're pretty scattered. So I'm going to say still not precise. All right, but are they accurate? Well, the group of data is probably averaged out where it would probably be very close to the, the actual target value or the bullseye value there. So I'm going to say, yeah, um, they are accurate. All right, so, so far that's the first three. Now, what about the last one? I think the last one pretty much speaks for itself. Are the are measured values precise? Absolutely. They're right grouped together just nicely. So I'm going to say are precise. Oops. Uh, 
But what about their accuracy? Absolutely. So the last one, we have both have good precision and we have good accuracy. All right? So hopefully that's a, a pretty good example of helping you to determine accuracy and precision there with a group or a set of data points. All right, so now let's look at a graphical representation of accuracy and precision, okay? So what we have here is a reference value. Now, the reference value is going to be considered our um, true value or accepted value, okay? It's what we as scientists say, this is the correct value, all right? Now, what we're doing in our experiment is we're going to collect a set of data points, and the set of data points are going to range according to this bell curve from this point to this point. So point A to point B is our data point range, all right? So this represents the range of data. I'm not sure exactly how many points were taken, but somewhere within point A and B, we took multiple data points. And then we took those data points and we averaged them together to get this line here. And this is going to be our mean or average of data. Okay? So, precision then deals with how close our range is to our mean here, okay? So that's what's represented by this right here, is that the smaller this range is, and the closer it is to the mean value, then the more precise our set of data points are. So it's represented more by this bell curve. Whereas the accuracy is determined the distance our mean, our average point is, to our accepted literature point, or true point, okay? So when you do a lab, one of the things that you're going to have to deal with on your lab report and analysis is looking at your precision, how close the data is to each other from trial to trial, to your average, so you're always gonna have to average um, your data points, and then you're gonna have to compare your average or mean value to an accepted um, or true value that I will give you in class. And I'll show you a little bit more how to do that later on. All right, so here, let's get into a little bit more examples here. So, um, if the normal boiling point of water is 100 degrees C, all right, and you use a mercury thermometer that measures that boiling point to 99.5 degrees C plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees C, okay? So there's the uncertainty value, which we'll be talking about um, later on in Lesson 6. Um, so we know that the true value of water boiling point is 100 degrees C, all right? And a thermometer... The mercury thermometer actually does an experimental measurement of 99.5, okay? Now, we also use a temperature probe, which is referred to as a data probe, and it actually records to 98.15, all right? So the question is, is which one of these thermometers, the data probe or the mercury thermometer, is more accurate, all right? And looking, this is the true value. Here's, again, the thermometer that's mercury, and here's the data probe. The mercury thermometer must be more accurate because it is closer to the true value than the data probe is. So we would say the thermo mercury thermometer is more accurate. However, what about the precision? Well, remember, this is a single data point, and so we have to look at the number of significant figures. Because the data probe has more significant figures, of four sig figs compared to the three sig figs, we would have to say that the data probe is more precise. 
due to the number of sig figs, right? Now, finally, what we're going to do is look at some real data here, all right, from an experiment where four students collected some data and determined the density of a particular object, okay? Now, in the data, we find, or the teacher uh, told the students that the actual value or the actual density is 5.2 um, grams per milliliter, okay? So that's the accepted or true value. And so these, each one of these students is going to do three trials, okay? So one, two, and three trials, which is pretty typical of a chemistry classroom, all right? So we have, I'm going to write down here, student A, student B, student C, and student D. And we're going to compare the accuracy and precision of these four students and the results, okay? So let's look at the data points for student A, all right? So the single data points, um, we're going to look more at the group for the, uh, for the overall precision. Are these three data points close together? I think the obvious answer is no. So I'm going to say student A is not precise, all right? However, what about its accuracy? Well, when you take these three data points and you average them together, you get an average of 5.21. Well, how close is that to our actual value? Pretty good. So it, the data, believe it or not, is not precise, but it is accurate. All right? So now let's look at student B's data. All right? These three groups, are they, is the precision good? Are we close? I'm going to say the precision is pretty good. So I'm going to say, is precise. However, what about the accuracy? Well, the average of these data points is 5.22, and it is really close. So is accurate, OK? What about student C? Um, precision, I would say, is not too bad in some of these um, overall. When you round that, it would be to 0 0.2. So I would say student is precise. But is it accurate? I would say definitely not. The average of these data points, the average is quite far away. All right, now let's look at this last student here and let's see if we can decide here. Um, looking at the precision, I would say not good. All right, these data points are definitely far away from each other. Um, the average is 5.87, which is fairly far away from our actual true value of 5.2, so I would say not accurate. All right. So there's kind of the experimental results in comparing the accuracy and precision of these four particular students, okay? Well, I hope this was helpful. This is it, all I have for this part one of this le lesson. Um, so make sure you just come to class prepared to know the difference between accuracy and precision. Be able to look at a set of experimental data and determine if the um, data is precise and if it's accurate if I give you a true or accepted value. Okay, so that is it for this.